I can't I can't hear Done. you. So it's, That's done. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Um okay, so um Today's user group meeting is gonna, uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview where we are with the development work and on our machine actionable features. We, you'll have a chance to ask questions and, um, we can, we can take a quick coffee break, assuming that we were not uh, running ahead, uh, or we could just go straight into the uh, demonstration. Um, <clears throat> Um, by Yari Freeman on their question ID. Sorry, there's a, there's a mistake here. Uh, it's uh, the proposed feature is question IDs, um, not research outputs. Um, okay, so if you remember, the development priorities for 2023-24 were to deploy uh, more uh, machine actionable uh, features. Uh, one of the most integration research organization registry, another one was the, a dynamic grant ID field. Um, then the new plan creation wizard, this was not necessarily a machine actionable feature, but uh, it's something that everybody uh, wants us to revise. And then uh, we proposed integration with our space as an example of an integration with another, um, let's call it data management platform. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've devised, um, our de uh, sorry, divided our development work in, uh, let let's say quarterly um, um, chunks. So for the November, January development sprint, um, <clears throat> we are proposing to do integration with the research organization registry, the dynamic grant ID field, uh, an upgraded research outputs feature to include data side UIs, um, and uh, in the integration with our space. Um, DMP Tooly have also come forward with uh, a proposal uh, for uh, adding um, question IDs. Um, and uh, this, uh, in theory, should be easy to implement, but it's uh, it's a matter, we, we thought we would open it to the whole group to see if you would like it deployed um, to the wider DMP online community. Um, uh, they will present the case and I hope that it, uh, it will be very clear what they plan to achieve with it. Um, okay. Um, before I move on to the workshop on interoperability, uh, I just wanted to uh, give you a quick overview of where we are with these. Most of these features were at the stage where we are um, uh, writing uh, detailed specifications, feature specifications. At the moment, a lot of development work has been done in, in the common roadmap code, but also in DMP online, and we don't have very detailed feature specifications, and we don't know why things were done one way and not another. And we kind of, we feel that these are important to put out there to, to the wider community, um, uh, documents that you can read um, and perhaps comment on. And if it comes, any features continuously evolving, if it comes, we, uh, we are going to have to change it. It's important to document why we changed it. We changed it because it wasn't working. We changed it because it was necessary and how we changed it. So this is why we're taking our time over writing this uh, feature specifications. Um, the feature specifications, I think uh, we, we can send you some examples uh, after once we've completed some. The feature specifications include uh, use cases. Um, um, uh, they include, you know, um, uh, graphs for the uh, how the data uh, models of the data in the system. They include, um, uh, you know, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> the word is not coming, uh, wireframes. For the interface and how uh, the workflows are gonna uh, gonna be, it's important that we design this and and really think it before we go and say, oh, this is just a matter of adding another button and it will work this way. We really need to to think um, um, about the workflow um, because if we don't, I feel that it damages the um, um, the usability of the tool. The research the the research outputs feature uh, I think is very useful, but uh, parts of it don't work as we would like them to, and that's why uh, we're, for example, uh, bringing it back into uh, redevelopment. Um, um, so this is where we are with most of them. We're essentially writing um, uh, specifications. Um, I'm hoping, as we said, we're hoping to deliver. Uh, 
all of them by the end of January. We think the research output feature, because it requires not just um, uh, improvement to the user interface, but also uh, further development, integration with data side DOIs, um, this may um, this may only be available in demo format. We don't we don't know. We can't promise. Uh, we're hoping that we can finish it. <laughs> But we have so much other work to do uh, at the back end that um, um, we're reluctant to just say um, uh, it, it will be completed. Um, in any case, it wasn't, if you like, uh, we, we didn't promise it as one of our development priorities, but we feel that because many people um, like it and want to use it, it's important that we, uh, we improve it. So we brought it uh, here. Um, we brought it forward. The, New plan creation wizard. We decided to move it uh, further back into um, uh, into the spring uh, development sprint. The reason for this being that in, it requires further thinking. Uh, we will have to come back to you, the user group, with several iterations. That's what I envisage will happen, and it also requires us to uh, do a lot more uh, development work at the back end, reorganization of data and. Uh, we can't uh, afford um, to work on the back end as well as on this new plan creation wizard, uh, which is, uh, in, in, in our view, a major change. Um, but it will happen. We'll start working on it in, in spring. Um, integration with our space. Um, this one is also at the stage where we're writing a uh, um, uh, a uh, sorry, a specification document for it. Um, as I understand it, it's it's going ahead uh, uh, really well. But initially, when we said we're going to do uh, integration with our space, we thought what we're going to deliver was um, us feeding data management plans into the R space uh, platform. But we thought that perhaps later in the year, um, in in the summer development sprint, we could actually get our space to feed um, eLab notebooks as as research outputs into uh, DMP online. Sorry if this sounds a bit complicated, but uh, I, I hope you're following me. So pe people create uh, their their laboratory notebooks. Um, and they can actually put them as as the research outputs, attach them to a date to their data management plan. So it, it will be a, a two way feed. Initially, we thought we we're going to do a one way feed from DMP line to another space, but um, we we can work on it and enhance it. Any questions so far? I can see some. I put one in the chat. In the yeah. chat. yeah, I can see that. Can you give an example of what does not work the way you want on research output? Um, okay, I, I can come back to this in the Q&A session. Is that okay? Um, um, because I would have to, perhaps it would be best if we share a screen. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Sorry, my... My slides are okay. So, um, workshop on interoperability. Um, if you remember, I mentioned that we're putting forward this as a proposal as part of um, the International Digital Curation uh, Conference in 2024 in February, and it has been approved. <clears throat> um, I can give you a quick overview of the, the format. Um, so this will include presentations from uh, several DMP platforms. You'll be asked, DAMAP, Opidor, uh, Argos, DMP tool, and the Data Stewardship Wizard. Um, I think, it, I apologize if these are no familiar names. Uh, I can, when I upload uh, the slides uh, onto our website, I can, I can turn these into links and you can click onto them and see. Um, the purpose of the workshop is to, um, uh, I, I've, I think what I put on the slides is a bit wordy, but essentially what they want to do, and it's a bit ambitious, is to come up with uh, a set of standards 
for uh, interoperability. You know how we have common standards for um, uh, what data management plan should uh, complete, yes, Matt, yes. Um, what a data management plan should contain, the kinds of fields it should contain, um, and which uh, fields should ideally be uh, machine actionable or can be machine actionable. Well, they're thinking that we could perhaps have the same discussion about interoperability. Should um, uh, you know, data management platforms, uh, data management plan platforms should ideally um, retrieve data from other uh, from other tools and reuse it rather than get people to uh, manually fill in, which is what we're trying to achieve with the machine actionable field. Uh, sorry, machine actionable um, 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 grant ID field, for example, or the research outputs feature. Um, and they think that we could perhaps do the same um, overall um, by deciding which platforms are necessary to turn um, uh, DMPs uh, into, you know, into a kind of um, tool that can take care of the data in its full life cycle and avoid uh, uh, having users to constantly fill in um, bits of the uh, you know of information that they are actually uploading other tools and interlinking between all of these tools at various bits of the data management life cycle. Um, some people think that this is a bit ambitious. Other people think this is perfectly achievable. For example, um, our space, they have, um, uh, ha they have, they make it a virtue of linking to every single tool that they can link to. Um, but they are not, they don't think that, um, I think in a brief discussion with them, they said, just link to as many tools as your researchers ask you to link. Uh, if 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 it's necessary, follow the protocols for open science and fair sharing, um, but don't worry too much about um, um, you know how you integrate it. Make it work as best as you possibly can. Um, give it to the to the researcher. That's the way they seem to work. I'm not speaking their name. I'm just telling you what I've seen by using the platform, um, um, and you know provide this interoperability. I got the impression when I last spoke to you um, that ideally you would want this to be, be better integrated in the plan. You don't want us to just add uh, a series a link to a series of tools. You want um, you want these tools to somehow help fill in the plan, uh, talk to the plan in, in some way, talk to a particular field in the plan. I may be misunderstanding this. This is why I feel that we need to have this uh, discussion. Um, um, this uh, and, and that's what the workshop on interoperability uh, will will do. Um, at the moment, the the overall um, look of the workshop is the morning sessions. There will be four sessions. It's roughly split into four sessions. The first morning sessions will contain uh, brief presentations, you know, uh, rapid presentations on what each of these DMP platforms uh, are interlinked are interlinking with and the challenges they've had interlinking to other tools. You've seen, a, uh, I don't know how many of you were uh, the last user group. You saw, for example, a demonstration from Opidor um, on how they're interlinking with their uh, national uh, funder, retrieving data from their national funder database. Um, I will make the case, for example, that, uh, again, this is this is my point of view and from, from our experience uh, in working on, on interoperable features is that the more of this interlinking you do, you really need to proceed very carefully because the more tools you add, it, the, the more difficult it gets to uh, maintain the usability of the tool. You can't just interlink with tools for the sake of it. Um, you really need to, pro to, to, to enhance usability somehow to provide the user with something. I'm providing you with a machine actionable uh, grant ID field because you can pre-fill pre the following fields. I'm providing you with a, a you know, data side UI because it can help you uh, complete information on your research outputs. Um, 
at one of our user group meetings, and I think it was the one in October, I may be wrong. Yeah, it was the one in October. I asked you for a list of uh, tools you would like to interlink with. I can send it again and ask you, what, what do you think the benefit um, of linking to this would be um, to yourselves uh, as data stewards and to the user? Um, I, I don't know. I think linking to too many tools can get in the way. Our space thing, no. Uh, you provide, uh, they've asked for interlinking with this, uh, you provide it. <laughs> um, um, and uh, Rory uh, from our space will be uh, will be at the workshop and um, will put forward his case and, and uh, ask questions and debate these issues. So you will have these presentations. We can then um, uh, the, uh, split into several groups and discuss uh, uh, various issues. The after that will be mostly the morning sessions. In the afternoon, um, once we decide which perhaps which fields or which areas, not not right down to the field in the DMP, which areas uh, in a in a plan uh, should be linked with other platforms and why. Um, the afternoon sessions will be somewhat more technical, not limited to developers, but you know everybody's welcome. But we'll we'll kind of ask developers, how do you think? How easy do you think this will be, or how, um, even if it is achievable, is how will how will it change the tools? Um, so it will be a very hands-on, very practical session, not like a hackathon, not quite like a hackathon. They won't be coding as such, but we will ask them what technical challenges they will encounter um, while doing this. Uh, sorry, I think I've I've, I've already uh, spoken too much here. Uh, I hope this is making sense, but uh, we get to the uh, uh, asking questions, and uh, if if anything was unclear, you can um, uh, you can let me know. Um, so um, feel free to go ahead and ask questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stop sharing for a moment so that I can see your faces because um, I I can't uh, see your faces, and it's very difficult to have a discussion. Um, okay, so the first one was from Mark. Uh, what what does not work the way you want? I don't know if you want to help me on this, uh, Glennis. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I can go uh, and open the, the tool. Okay. And I'll share the screen in a moment. My dashboard lets you which plan has machine translation, I think this one has research output. Okay, I'm going to share the screen and give you a live demonstration of what I don't particularly like about it. I like the research outputs, don't worry, we're not, we're not, <laughs> we're not planning to do anything to it, but improve it. Um, and I think several of you like it as well. Um, okay. screen again. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Okay. So when we are the research, so as I said, from a usability point of view, this feature needs improving because when you want to add a research output, um, this bit is, is easy. Uh, I'm going to say it's a data set. I'm going to say is it's called my second data set. Sorry, um, some description. So from a pure usability point of view, I can just say we can take sensitive data just to pick a button. Adding a repository, I almost need to know the name of the repository to be able to. So um, unless I've typed something in here before, this is not um, an active search field. So let's say uh, uh, if I start typing Dublin, you see it because I've typed it before, but it doesn't automatically fill in. Do you see? Somebody yes. give me a name of another repository. I can do apply filters and paradoxically it clicks, it selects them all, right? Uh, it just gives them all of them to me and I can select genomes. Mm -hmm. 
So I want it to be uh, an active search field where I start typing. Yeah. And when I start typing research data, let me just see. Aberdeen birth controls. Let me type. Aberdeen. See, if I if yeah. I haven't yeah. entered this before, it's just it's, it's just very difficult to use. Um, cool. Second yeah? thing uh, you might consider is um, fields are independent of each other. For instance, you indicated it was sensitive data. Uh, what would be a nice feature if it only shows you the the repositories that accept sensitive data? Yeah, or that's right. Like something like that. So a connection between some of the choices would be a good idea. But that's again, right. uh, the, the trouble with that, of course, is uh, if it says it's acceptable, uh, does that mean is it acceptable for you? So you still have to consider whether that's the right choice for you. So it's not a, not a, not a uh, perfect solution, of course, but it could, could be improved by uh, maybe... Uh, linking choices. Okay, yeah, I made a quick note of that. So you see what I mean by it not being um, very easy to use. And it's the same with um, uh, metadata standards. And I remember uh, people actually saying that the repository should be able to feed a metadata standard because um, uh, repositories already use their, their own metadata standards. These ones, uh, uh, you know, otherwise work well, but um, I think this this should be easy to fix, and um, uh, I don't see why uh, we can't fix it. I'm going to uh, cancel this if you don't mind. And but, but, uh, but about about these fields, there's many more things uh, to, yeah. to be considered. For instance, you indicated okay, I, I make a certain selection of the output that I'm wanting uh, that I want to uh, indicate here mm -hmm. uh, and you said paper or data set or uh, mm -hmm. gra graph etc that still requires definitions because uh, it doesn't mean the same thing for everyone for instance software is that code uh, is that uh, what is software you mean uh, tooltips uh, yeah definitions what do you mean by audiovisual? What do you mean by collection? Okay. What is, it, what is a data paper? Yeah. The, the, uh, it, the terminology is based on what we are used to. So for us, it, it speaks more to what we're used to. But for researchers, uh, it may be difficult to, to make the right choice here. Yeah. Because uh, they have their own ideas on what, what the choices here mean. Yeah, there are lots. There are lots more. So um, we are taking notes. Please feed in on the on the agenda. It's been put on the uh, in the chat. You have the link there. Um, feed in your comments. Just just add them. Uh, don't be shy. We we can organize the the uh, the date and as I sorry the data and the notes. As I said, uh, we will. Um, um, these are the kinds of things that we are feeding into a feature specification so that we know um, why we're making these changes and, and how the feature is meant to work. Um, but it, it, it's one of those things that you have to, you have to start by um, improving it one step at a time iteratively um, so uh, because otherwise if you if you want to do everything in one go it, it might take forever and people people like to use this feature and uh, it's important that we improve it uh, but without you know huge delays uh, and the the other thing that we wanted to do I'm just going to cancel this is in here um, people will be able to select and, and assign a, a, a data side DOI. Um, and then it will be displayed. We're just thinking of how to, to work so that we can display. You will have, you know, my first data set access level and a DOI, uh, a data side DOI on the sheet, ideally. Um, but again, it will be a matter of improving the interface. You may have to make this a bit wider. 
it's the all of these things. Um, it, it's so nice to add an additional button, but then you have to think about the whole interface and how it works for the user. <laughs> um, and since we're talking about this, I meant to uh, to mention that uh, uh, our job description for the developer, uh, uh, the UX developer, um, uh, is with HR, and I'm hoping that they will release it. Uh, it's with our human resources department. Apologies for the um, um, for the uh, acronyms there, and uh, they're currently grading it. I'll let you know as soon as we. Um, um, publicize it, but it's, uh, we are really, really keen to have somebody with um, experience in designing user interfaces um, um, so that while we're developing and improving our features, uh, that they can give their input on, on this. Think of workflows, think of, you know, where that button should sit. Um, okay, let's see what are the questions. How am I doing for time, team? Chris Gibson, data side metadata schema might help with definitions of output types for some cases. Also, other schema may provide useful definitions. Yeah. Yeah, we're aware of this. So uh, uh, retrieving data site, uh, you both, you and Mark are making very uh, important points because when we're retrieving uh, information uh, by adding a DOI from data site, you don't just retrieve the DOI itself. Um, the, you know, the, uh, data site can provide the the name of the um, um, of the data set as it's been uploaded on some repository. Uh, it can it can feed feed in a lot of information and help with interlinking the fields. Um, also, if you are in a Nina, also if you are in a university, then the institutional repository should be pre-populated. Forgive my ignorance, but what do you mean? Uh, so most universities will have as a repository yeah. or repository of first choice, their own institutional yeah. repository. So it would make sense that if a person has got their affiliation for the university down in mm -hmm. search, the first thing that should appear would be their university repository. Ah. And then in other so or, when they search the repository you mean yes or again okay. when um, a person has put down that they have a certain funding uh-huh they will specify certain repositories so at that 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 should be it shouldn't be a random list those two should be at the top of the list yeah at the moment the uh, repository uh the list of repositories retrieved um, um from a database and many universities don't really uh put their repositories there you see that was the other thing that concerned me is that's which database is that uh, re3 data right it looks yeah, like right. it's r3 data it's it's yeah, it's it on on uh yeah so yeah. It there looked, it is. It looked like this our, one. Yeah, it looked like that. Um, so the problem with that, I think, is that no universities don't write down their institutional repositories there. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So I basically, have. what you're suggesting is that the tool has somehow a uh, record that allows the institution to label any repositories that they have or even link with the template basically mm -hmm. Is that what you're kind of suggesting sorry okay. nina you're suggesting that that basically the university links a repository for example with with a, a template is that your suggestion well not, not not mandatory, but as a suggestion. No, no, no. Yeah, but I am pointing out that in many cases, this is a, a there is a policy decision here. There, there, there is a, a an implication that people who are employed at, or affiliated with certain places do have prefer, at least preferential deposit to certain places. Yeah. And, this, certain funds. and in, in and that um that database doesn't 
actually reflect those repositories. Kind of default repository should be in there, you, you're suggesting? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, we have to think about that uh, and how that would work with the research outputs feature. But I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Um, thanks, Nina. Um, we've well, got another two minutes before the coffee break. Soile. Uh, I have one comment related to this uh, read three data repo mm -hmm. collection. So we just thought that we are going to suggest our repository uh, uh, to this uh, list on mm -hmm. read three data. But when I check the uh, registration policy, uh, there is said that uh, they have their uh, repository should have focus on research data. And for example, our repository is not for data, it's mainly for publications. So that is the reason, for example, we cannot just suggest our repository to the re 3 data, so, so it won't be on the options when we are going to choose our repository, but that is, that is not a problem. That, that is our problem. So if you have repos with data, so that is fine. But for example, yeah. in our case, but it's There is not... an issue. There is an issue there because um, we also, we were also, uh, we went to, we attended the data side community event and there seemed to be this trend where data side provides uh, DOIs for data sets, Crossref uh, and funders want to link to Crossref to provide DOIs for their grant IDs, for their grants, right, via Crossref. And the reason why they chose Crossref is because they, the, the Crossref provides publications, looks after publications, right? So it seems that the funders are veering towards Crossref. And although we see in Although we see that in, in the research outputs, we have an option for publications, those don't necessarily come, publications are mostly getting their DOIs from, from Crossref and they're not treated the same way as, um, uh, as repos repositories are. Um, they seem to be, they seem to be seen as different. So not always the repository of publications, isn't it? If you think about it. Um, but so we have to see how this goes. I mean, we, we can link to uh, Crossref and we can, we can link to uh, funders DOIs for data management plans, which they will issue via Crossref. And in that way, if you click on the DOI for your grant, you will eventually find your way to the publications via Crossref, via the Crossref DOIs. Um, but at the same time, it's not as simple as, you know, you go to the research outputs, you select the by research output is a publication, and now I find my way to the repository of publications. Um, I, know what you, I know what you mean. It may be that there's a different route um, to, uh, to publications. Yeah, but, but we thanks are not, for highlighting not, that. We are not uh, missing the publications, but just for, for information that are uh, repository or publication repository is not suitable for re three data. So I don't mm -hmm. know how different organizations ha have these things. We don't have data in our repository. We we uh, give different solutions to our researchers. Right. So our repository our repository is for publications. So these these kind of things should be considered when you are thinking registration to re three data. Under project details, the new tick box, this is Lisa, research outputs may have ethical concerns. Can we admin export that information somehow to identify sensitive projects? Could that info be a column in the export plans? It is a valuable idea, but I thought we already did that. Because I can know I... It, through the API, you can yeah. get that You can get that level uh, in your JSON file, the, the information is there. Yeah. That's how we do it. Uh, we have a registry uh, at the university for sensitive research, and we populate that based on uh, JSON files uh, from DMP online uh, using the metadata at that level where the research output uh, is included as well. Not just that, but it's part of it. You could do that if you want. Lisa, maybe we can um, 
uh, if you drop, if we email DMP online, um, we can um, we can chat about this further. Yeah, will do. Thank you. Okay. Can I just ask Mark a follow up question? Uh, Mark, are DMPs mandatory for your researchers? Do you trust the information that you get from uh, the API? Uh, there's uh, two answers to that. <laughs> uh, in a way, we trust the information because uh, the policy at our university requires researchers uh, to create a DMP uh, uh, if they are using uh, sensitive data. So it's a mandatory requirement. Uh, do you trust the data is another matter because <laughs> uh, the uh, responsibility of uh, creating DMPs with the right information is uh, has been um, put at the faculty level and uh, the procedures for that uh, I'm not sure how every faculty manages it this so uh, I'm only responsible for uh, getting the data in the register and that's all I'm doing uh, it's up to the faculties to make sure the data is correct or there that's needed but the internal procedures uh, to make sure every researcher follows those is very difficult that's something you need to yeah uh, develop internally in your procedures yeah totally understand thank you so much very yeah, interesting I, yeah i will we'll come i'll come back to that because we will talk a bit about this at our january um uh, user group uh, I'll come back to that at, at the end, uh, and I'll explain why. Oh, yes, my name is Jari Freeman. I work at the Tampere University Library, and here is my colleague Matti. Hello. Also. And uh, also we are part of the Finnish EMP Consortium's Technical Working Group. That's, that's, that's also one of the reasons we are here. And this presentation is, uh, we, we try to describe briefly about those, the, the idea of these question IDs. In the case of and in the case Tampere University, how we will are, how we are going to uh, apply this solution. Uh, so, uh, but first, I would say uh, I, I thought it might be useful to describe very briefly. But we have the situation in Finland. So, so basically, in Finland, we have this uh, DMP consortium uh, who funds the National Data Management Planning Tool DMP Tooli. Uh, which is of course an instance of DMP online, and and this DMP consortium, consortium is a cooperation network, and its task is to promote research data management planning in Finland, and we have uh, 32 Finnish higher education institutions and research uh, organizations, so that includes uh, most of the universities, not or, not everyone, but most of the universities, but also those uh, University of Applied Sciences and other other research institutions and we have this uh, technical working group and and, we, and the task is to compare and evaluate DMP tools available at the moment and and, and do some software requirements specifications and and, and any, any any things like that but the use case from the our university is called data index uh, and the goal of our data index index is to build uh, the integrations from DMP Tooli to our local IT infrastructure and interlink the DMP information with the information retrieved from other uh, local information systems. I can I have a picture on this. I can I can show it the picture on the next next slide. The reason why we are uh, planning this uh, is that we of course we, as we all do we want to make it easier for researchers to write DMPs. And and we try. We think it's uh, it one 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 way of doing this is to by utilize these these so-called multi multiple choice questions and uh, drop down lists and radio buttons and things like that. Because we we believe that by having a uh, more specific and detailed questions, we get uh, more better information. We we get better answers. We get uh, 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 and and of course they are also uh, easier to answer for researchers because we have more simpler questions. And of course, we try to provide better services for researchers, for researchers based on the uh, information that they give on data management plans. For example, if, if, if researchers say that 
they will need uh, they will need uh, for example five terabytes of data. We can we can uh, we can proactively uh, uh, make a, a storage request, for example, on behalf of the researcher and, and get get them the, the storage space that they want. Um, also, we we think and, and we know it's easier for data support professionals to review and evaluate DMPs with if if they have a, a more specific and detailed uh, questions in the data management plans. So so we are not, of course, uh, in our data, data management plan template, we also have those free text answers, but we try to utilize uh, as, as much as we can those multiple choice uh, questions and, and, and ready-made answers and things like that. And of course, the main, main, main reason why we are actually doing this is to have, uh, because the to retrieve information on research projects and data sets, which is uh, required for university administration. For, for example, in Tampere, we don't, we don't know all the research projects, which uh, processes, for example, personal information. And, and we know that we should know. We should have this information. And, 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 and we don't, at, at this moment, we don't have any, any, any way of uh, collecting this information. And, and we believe that uh, this data management plan could be uh, uh, at least one way to collect the information on, on, on the project if they process personal information. And what kind of personal information? And so we have actually in, the, in, our, in our template, we have quite specific questions on related to data, uh, these privacy related questions and, and, and data protection and, and, and things like that. And also we, of course, we need to identify because at the university we have uh, uh, many, many uh, local information systems. So we need to uh, uh, find the relevant information systems that we, uh, that we try to, that we want to, uh, in, which, which, we, which we want to use to interlink that information uh, from the data management plans and how, we, how that could be done. But here is a, a, a picture on this. Uh, I hope it, it will, <laughs> it will tell you a bit, uh, more clearly about this. So first, we uh, researcher creates a data management plan by using a DMP tool. Uh, usually, this is done after a positive funding de funding decision. Uh, also, when they start uh, a new PhD project, and also also in the case of applying a statement from, for, for example, ethics review board. But of course, this, this is not all. All so we we also we also need a process on getting 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 much more. Uh, 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 a data management plan than only this. So usually uh, at, at one point could be, for example, when 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 researchers are processing personal information. So 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 we we so that's that's one point when when they should uh, uh, write a data management plan. Uh, the idea is that the data, DMP data is transferred to the uh, university's master data management system and by using this uh, API. And and we and we and uh, the the idea is in the future to interlink the information from uh, the related to research projects and and we, we uh, to, to 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 this uh, data management plan information. So for example, in financial management system, we have we have uh, information on 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 research projects. Also, in the records management system, we have information on research pro projects. So so the idea is to is is to interlink the information. As much as we can, but the starting point uh, is is the data management plan because because uh, at this point we will uh, it, it's the it's the best way of getting getting at least something some information on the on the projects. Okay, so we will uh, we are planning to using the AP, API version zero, which allows us to retrieve the user plans. As a JSON file, so that we can import aspects of the plan into our local uh, research data management system, and 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 in the JSON file, the DMP questions can only be identified by using the question numbers and the quest question texts as identifiers. So the problem is that if you need to make any changes to question texts or change the order of the questions, that will break the integration. So so the uh, that's why that's why we have thought that the solution for this would be these question IDs. Because we, when we use the IDs, so, so we, don't, we, can, we can still make, make some changes to questions. Because at this point, it's, it's not uh, uh, 
we, we may need to change the template. We may, may need to add some questions and we'll, we may need to reformulate the questions because, because we are only starting, starting to doing this. So we uh, probably don't know all the use cases which we might, might uh, want the information from the plan. So, so we may need to add questions and th things like that. So that's why we, why we believe that these ideas would be a, a solution. You know, and the other, other reason is that they would be uh, quite easy to implement since the IDs are created in, in this case by org admin users. But of course, the downside is that if, if, if the IDs are created by the users, so org admin users, so, so, so it, 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 it requires quite careful uh, uh, local ID management. So, so we, we need to be careful for when we try to utilize these, these IDs. And uh, this is the picture that uh, uh, Diana sent, sent me. So, so this this one uh, uh, idea of how to present this uh, this uh, in in the user interface. So there would be uh, the question uh, question number one, and then the question identifiers are are, are there uh, ident identifier values there, and then and then there's identifier name. So th so they are basically two two uh, two uh, new fields. In the in the admin admin interface. Yeah, and the next slide we have some yeah. example of the data how it might look on the API side. So as you can see, there is at this there's a provision for using multiple identifiers. So for example, if you knew, if we decide that we might combine uh, DMPs from for example different organizations for some use case, it could be done. And we have also um, uh, identifiers for uh, questions, uh, uh, no, no answers, I mean. So basically, um, these identifiers, they are like variable names. So as you can see, there is this um, identifier storage requirement. And when the user has uh, chosen the value uh, less than 250 kilo, uh, gigabytes, the variable gets the uh, value less than two, uh, 250. So this uh, calling uh, these uh, uh, identifiers is a bit, bit misleading, but calling them variables, it's even more misleading. So this is why we, we call, call them identifiers. So so this is the um, way we can handle this data integration in our side. And Yari, you can see the slide. And these are the components we are going to use in this our infrastructure. Basically, we are uh, our IT department is using. We are all Microsoft House, so all the components are for Microsoft Cloud. So for reading the data inside to our system, we are using Azure Data Factory. It's quite a flexible, flexible tool for uh, visually uh, describing how we are going to uh, map map the data in. And we, uh, uh, in addition, uh, that we we will uh, use the structured data. We will uh, save the whole JSON file locally, so we can version it. And uh, the the data we have read in using the identifiers, we will store to the this SQL server. And that's the platform we are gonna use for uh, combining the data, data from different systems. And for reporting, we are gonna use Power BI because that's the tool we are anyway. Tampere University is using author for reporting. So that's the thing. <laughs> Any questions about identifiers yes. from the technical side? And also, of course, our, our, our use case here is. Happy to answer your questions. As expected, Mark, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, um, I seem to be always the one asking. Why would you say sorry? No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have good, two questions for you. Mm -hmm. One of them has to do with the identifiers themselves. Yeah. Uh, did you decide on a certain structure of the identifiers, for instance, uh, uh, which might include a certain date uh, item to indicate how old uh, the, the variable identifier is uh, in case you may need to change it later? 
So you can identify which were the older ones and which were are the newer ones, something like that, structure in the mm -hmm. identifiers. No, I think that um, uh, this is something we might have to do uh, manually. So if yeah. we change something, for example, semantics of the variable you mean. So we well, in a, in a way, it is. Uh, yeah. It could be uh, part of it could be identifying what the identifier is for, mm, yeah. and part yeah. part of it could be a date indicating how old it is or when it was implemented as as a variable. Yeah. 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 Hmm. This might be something we have to do in in the side of this uh, data factory, so we know yeah. the version that we are using at, at one particular point of time. Yeah. Yes. The second second question mm. I had was um, more to do with the system itself. Mm. So you're you're uh, using your version of the MP online uh, as a starting point uh, mm. for collecting the data on what research is being done. Mm -hmm. um, is is it a requirement for uh, your researchers to use this tool for uh, older research uh, and also? Does it include using only your template? Uh, yes. Uh, so at the moment, so we require research to you make a DMP when they apply certain funding. And for example, uh, uh, Research Council of Finland is, is one of the most important funders. So so they they will need actually uh, last spring was the first time when this new DMP template. Uh, was used and and researchers uh, has an opportunity to use the template. It, it was not obligatory to use the, our local template, but it was encouraged, and many 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 of them used it, and it, it worked well. Uh, uh, another point point of, is that when they start this new PhD uh, uh, studies, or when they apply statement statement from ethics board, but but yes, the pro problem is that at the moment, so we need to we need to expand this more. Because not all the researchers do when they start a new pro project, they don't do this DMP yet. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Mark? Uh, yes, it does. Um, Mati and um, um, Yari, I'm I'm not sure you. Perhaps you could explain a bit more about uh, how identifiers are unique. I don't think we we. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The the identifiers are unique on the template level, so it's uh, we are our in in our use case, it's not a requirement to the identifiers to be unique and globally. So basically, uh, uh, yes. Um, for example, you can see we can use this um, identifier name uh, as a namespace. So for, a, for an example, if University of Helsinki decides that they have uh, uh, like semantically similar questions and we want to merge, merge the data for some reason, uh, the identifier uh, value can maybe, for example, title, and our our case, it can be also a title, but because we have this uh, identifier name, we can, we can use it as a namespace. For example, it can be Tuni in our case, or Helsinki in University of Helsinki case. Or if we decide that, okay, this is might be a good idea to uh, use some Dublin core elements here, we could use it like a DC uh, name, namespace. So, uh, Yes. <laughs> Do you want to know more about our our uh, reasoning be behind this, or because okay. uh, maintaining the uniqueness globally, it's it's it makes th things uh, too complicated and unnecessarily unnecessarily complicated. And it's more flexible. 
But basically, these identifier values and names, they are completely free form. It's up to up to admin user to uh, maintain the integrity. Yeah, this way kind of makes the, the DMPs, um, I can, well, the templates a bit more machine actionable in a yeah. way, because that mm. means you can extract any yes. information from any yes. kind of field or any uh, question or answer in this case. Mm. And at the same time, it can go across templates. So if you have a template for a funder or if you have your own institutional template, you'll still be able to extract yeah. any information. Um, yes. So that that's, I think, the kind of key point on it is that mm. you're going to be able to make them machine actionable and easily extracting information across um all templates that you might be using mm. in Thanks, a, in, yeah in a perfect world we could be using this version one standard <laughs> api but this uh, this uh, approach this using this version zero and the full text of uh dmp it's it's more flexible and it's yeah it's it's more flexible but of course it's not that uh maybe no that not that interoperable than, than using the version one, the standard API. Okay. Yes, um, but it's still, uh, but our reasoning is that it's still better than nothing. <laughs> okay, thanks, Yari. So I guess we could, we, we've got um, uh, a couple of minutes and we could lead into the key question here, um, which is, um, do you see this um, uh, as being uh, expanded to the whole of DMP online? And in fact, Chris Chris has a question that uh, slides nicely into this. Uh, Chris, uh, I can read it out or you can actually uh, uh, say it yourself. You can, Chris, hello. <laughs> Hi, Diana. I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if you can hear me because... Uh, we can uh, hear you, we can hear you. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we already prefix all of our DMP templates with a locally created, what we call an outline section. And this mm -hmm. asks 15 or 16 multiple choice questions. And what we'd like to be able to do is harvest our researchers' responses and we do this uh, manually at the moment, but of course we'd love to do it uh, in, a, in an automated way using an API. Um, and what I'm thinking is that there are many institutions, each with their own local needs and their own questions that they want to ask. So I'm wondering, would it be possible that if a university creates its own multiple choice questions in its own dedicated DMP template section, then could we have the flexibility that each university who takes this approach, uh, that they could use an API to harvest data from their own locally created institutional section? And I'm not sure whether what I've described is the same as or just very similar to what uh, Tuli are doing. Um, I, I, I don't use APIs much myself, so sorry for the ignorance on that point. Do you want me to answer that, Diana? Um, it, it would be good, but can Marty, how do you think? Yari? Mm -hmm. Uh, this uh, identifier system sh should make this possible. Yeah, that that, that the thing you are trying trying to do, yes. <laughs> because okay, what I'm suggesting mm. is to add a section to an already existing template with which it would be a multiple choice uh, uh, questions. Um, so first of all, with the 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 kind of the kind of suggestion of the question identifiers, you would be able to know exactly which questions those were, uh, mm -hmm. and then with the additional field that we are adding, which is actually at the answer is almost like an answer identifier, which mm -hmm. translates a multiple choice answer into a field that you 
you know exactly what's the format that is going to be you'll then you will be able to extract exactly this basically you can pinpoint a multiple choice question answer of a user from a specific dmp so you and in v0 api you're able to extract the answers from all the questions that a specific user replied to a dmp so basically you'll be able to go down the line so but you will need um, like Matty and, and Jari were referring, they have an, a system behind it, which Azor is to, in order to extract that information and then analyze mm -hmm. it. So you will okay. still need that. That's yes. basically it. Um, Matty, go ahead. You yeah, yeah, yeah. We, so we are used, uh, yeah, uh, our uh, approach is that we read all the data in and then use the identifiers in our system to extract the data. It could be also done in API level, but it's more complicated. Okay, Mark? Um, yeah, just to add to that, uh, I think it's a very good idea to work with those identifiers. Uh, at the moment, uh, we're not really doing that. Uh, what we, we're doing is basically exactly what uh, some of you want. Is, uh, we're using the APIs to extract the data from uh, DMP online on two levels, and we're just processing it uh, but we're really focusing on just two specific templates that we created uh, with a specific structure. That way we know the order of things and uh, we're really uh, hands-on uh, where we don't want really changes uh, to that order. Otherwise we need to change stuff with the extraction, but uh, using identifiers would make that a lot easier. Uh, that's a very good idea. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, it was. When we st started our project, we uh, we had at first the idea, okay, we might use the numbers, but then we realized that okay, it's 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 that uh, DM uh, this template changes too often, so it's a burden to the IT services to all, all times to to the changes or their systems because we we don't have access to this uh, uh, data data factory component. Okay, so I guess the suggestion was very well received. Anybody has any other comments? Well, if not, thank you so much to uh, Yari and Mati. We'll proceed with this work. Um, we'll carry on uh, uh, writing the data spec specification and, and uh, get to the point uh, where we can actually start uh, coding. Mark, are you going? Oh, <laughs> this is our last, I'll be missing you. This is our last, <laughs> this is our last user group this year. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, do a quick wrap up. And um, so our next user group is 23rd of January. And we will have um, uh, the uh, new data steward from um, <clears throat> Uh, University College Dublin coming along to talk to us about how to make the existing template more interactive by adding checkpoints to it. You may remember uh, some of you who are subscribed to, Gen uh, to the Research Data Man list may have seen uh, an inquiry from Jennifer O'Neill about whether we have a template, whether anybody has a template about how to ensure the data management plan has been completed. <laughs> And by this, she means, how do I check that all the promises made into a data management plan have actually been delivered? Um, you know, the researcher has said that the um, um, that the uh, they will put this uh, data output in X repository. How do I how do I go and 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 what prompts do I get um, to to help me go at the right time um, to to check this? Um, that's how I understood it, and uh, I verified this with her and and uh, her new uh, her replacement. She's Jennifer O'Neill is moving, and on the twenty third of January they will come on and explain themselves uh, what exactly they mean. But I I agree uh, with her. I think data steers need prompts at various places in the DMP. Um, we can embed these into the template somehow. We can all come up with ideas on how to do this so that you come back to the plan and say to the uh, to the researcher, uh, please fill this in, please fill this in, assuming you have that capacity. Um, 
the, the, there are various ways of doing it, and we all have to to think about this. But um, at the moment, we need to we know we need to encourage the uh, uh, the researcher to come back to the to the plan and uh, continue to add information. Uh, the um, I know that some uh, I, I haven't had this confirmed from from any um, uh, funders, but I know the funders they said they continue to require. Uh, the the data management plan will be a key requirement, but they don't necessarily want to see it. They want the, they, they want some kind of confirmation from the data steward that the data management plan has been executed, <laughs> um, if that's the right word for it. But they don't necessarily want to see it. They just want confirmation that that is in place. Um, and I think we need to figure out uh, a way of delivering this via the data management platforms. I think this is going to be a very interesting talk. So I hope you can join us on the 23rd of January, where I will also um, uh, give more information. By, by then, we should have a full uh, a detailed program for the interoperability workshop, part of the IDCC conference uh, on the 19th of February. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I'll I'll be in touch with you to ask for further ideas uh, on how the workshop could run because I want you to shape it. You are the people who um, face this uh, daily struggle of uh, reviewing data management plans, getting researchers to fill in data management plans. So I think you're best qualified to uh, give in this kind of uh, input uh, on how data management platforms should work. Um, and yes, as I said, this is the last user group this year. I can't believe 2023 is already over. Um, so I'm going to take this opportunity to wish you all a, a, a lovely Christmas break. Um, although I'll be in touch before that with, <laughs> with uh, additional information, as I said, uh, about the, the workshop. Um, but... Uh, Okay, but uh, yeah, I can't, I can't believe 2023 is already over. Um, so the next uh, user uh, uh, user group is 23rd of January. After that, we uh, just very quickly, we're going to have a, a user group on 19th of March, 2024 by then, uh, and then we'll fo uh, focus on user experience. Um, what I'm hoping to do at that user group is to split us into, um, uh, into a variety of, uh, sorry, into uh, groups where we can go over various aspects of the DMP online uh, interface and where you say, I like this, I don't like this. It's not necessarily, user, it's not, it's not going to be uh, user testing. It's all the features of the tool and the workflows and you can just get to moan full time. I'm hoping that by then we'll also have our UX expert um, developer. And on the 21st of May, we are going to do, or yeah, that's, uh, that's another uh, uh, user group that's going to be uh, a community event where uh, I'm really working hard to get the funders because we, we need to hear from them. There's so much change. Uh, they have so many ideas, but uh, I want to get them around the table um, so that you can talk to them about how um, funders can work with data stewards um, to, uh, on uh, data management plans. And I think this is it. Any questions before we go? If not, thank you so much and uh, have a lovely Christmas break. <laughs>